Hello, welcome to our video series on advanced automation principles. My name is Wei Tai. I'm a solutions architect in the network programmability team at Cisco. The topic that I'm going to be discussing is called configuration dependency on state. If you would like your NetConf device to be easily automatable by service orchestrators or managers, this is something that you should be avoiding at all costs. Let's start with some background information from the RFC standards on this. YAN constraints on configuration data. As defined in the YAN 1.0 and 1.1 RFCs, section 8.1, constraints on data. If the constraint is defined on configuration data, it must be true in a valid configuration data tree. Another way to say it is that it must be possible to tell whether a particular configuration is valid just by looking at the configuration itself and nothing else. The reason behind this requirement is to ease automation and reduces any custom coding required to deal with invalid configurations. OSS systems and service orchestrators can validate the configuration data by having only the current configuration data tree on the device without having to check its current operational state. This is possible to do even when the device isn't running. So how is this done in practice? Yang constraints on the configuration, usually expressed in the form of must or when statements or leave wraps, must never refer to config force data. So this implies that the current device state must not play any part in whether a given configuration is valid or not. If you happen to be using ConfD and its validation call points feature to perform validation at runtime, your custom validation code must never use config force data to perform the validation of the configuration within a NetConf transaction. To illustrate the concept with the diagram, if a configuration has been valid in the past, it must still be valid now. The operational state of the device should never play any role here. Service managers rely on being able to go directly to any valid configuration without running into any error conditions. The main idea here is to eliminate any error handling coding in the manager that's caused by the device being in a different state than before. So how do you catch these incorrect configuration dependency issues? If the problem is in the YAN model, they can be caught during the YAN compilation with YAN compiler tools such as NSO's NCSC compiler and ComD's ComDC compiler. If this sneaks through your YAN compiler, your YAN module won't interoperate with most managers, if not all. However, you still need to fix the design of your YAN module. If validation is performed with custom runtime code, such as ComD's validation call points, the incorrect dependency needs to be removed. So here's an example showing how the incorrect dependency is being caught by ComD's ComDC Yang compiler. There's this must statement for this leaf node called max weight that looks at another leaf node called weight. When you configure max weight, the must statement ensures that it cannot be smaller than the value of weight. But if you look at how weight is defined, it is defined as state data. So when you go and compile it with ComD's ComDC YAN compiler, it showed an error that the node referring to max weight is config data, but it refers to a non-config node called weight. So this is how YAN constraints that are expressed with incorrect dependencies in a YAN model can be caught during YAN compilation. 
For simple constraints as shown in this example, you can easily spot the problem with your own eyes. For more complicated XPath expressions, a YAN compiler will come in handy. Here's a resources slide that can help you to learn about other service automation principles. There's a link for NSO, a link for Comfy. There's also a link for NIET, which is the NetConf and Yang automation testing program that is designed for device vendors to catch service automation interoperability and transactionality issues during device development. And the rest of this video series can be found in Telap Systems YouTube channel under the playlist of Advanced Automation Principles. Thanks a lot for watching.